Hello, friends, and happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use Guide. Uh, real quick before I get started today, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this channel is aiming for a thousand subs as quickly as possible, and as such, I'd greatly appreciate your subscription today. Uh, so, if you'd be so kind, subscribe down below, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend if you're feeling particularly generous. Um, your support, as always, is appreciated. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's get down to it. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Eris. The Eris was released March 13th of 2020, and last updated December 7th of 2020. Caxon did the design, the art, the animation, and the writing. Snorlaxo did the gameplay design, the code, and the sounds. Aiden did the Sunward Isles trinket art and Anonymous Koala helped with the animations. So, let's just dive straight into the base stats and see what this class has to offer. Uh, the max HP is a 19 at opening level, and it will become a 35 at max resolve. Um, so, this is a little below average. This is the same HP as a Jester or an Occultist would have. Um, so, a little squishy. Not too bad, though. Uh, the dodge is going to start at a 3 at opening resolve and move to a 23 at max resolve. This is below average and this is a custom track so it's in between the 0 to 20 and the 5 to 25 dodge tracks. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a little lacking but if you bring units that will protect her or a trinket that might buff that um, you probably won't notice too much. Uh, the prod is going to be a 0 as you'd expect. The speed is a 4 at opening resolve. This moves to a 5 at 3rd level and a 6 at 5th level. So this is an above average speed track. Uh, it's the same as a Hellion or a Vestal has. So you know it's pretty common. And the accuracy is going to be a 0 as you'd expect naturally. Uh, the crit is going to be a 2% at opening resolve and it'll progress to 6% at max level. This is also slightly below average. I consider 3% to be average to start with. Um, this is the same tracking as a Man at Arms or an Abomination would have. And the damage is going to be a 4 to 7 at first level and an 8 to 12 at max level. Um, this is very comparable to backline damage. It's a little different. It's a unique growth, um, but it's very comparable to the backline damage you'd expect from uh, like a Houndmaster or an Occultist. So overall, it looks like there's a little bit of below average stats going on in several of these places, uh, but the speed and the damage should keep her relevant. And then we haven't even looked at her combat stats yet, so you'll find out what she's really got in store here in a moment. The first combat skill is Quick Shot. It's usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target rank 2, 3, or 4 on the enemy side. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a crit mod of 5%, and it does bonus damage versus marked targets. It's going to do an additional 70% damage versus marked targets and have an additional 15 accuracy versus marked targets. So seeing as some of her accuracy is a little bit low on this attack, the fact that a bonus 15 is going to a marked target is going to um, pretty much ensure that you're way more likely to hit than you otherwise would be with this attack. Uh, the bonus damage is great. That's comparable to like Bounty Hunter, I believe, at the same level. Um, so it's going to be actually pretty good for taking people out. The second combat skill is Barrage. It's usable from rank 3 or 4, and targets rank 3 and 4 enemies at the same time. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 40%, and no crit modifier. This is going to debuff those targets minus 8 to their dodge. The debuff has a 100% base. So even if you're not buffing your debuff here, there's a good chance you're going to be debuffing those back rank targets to be minus dodge with this. Um, it's good for setting up kills, it really is. So if you can get a you know an early round use of this on a particularly dodgy back rank unit or a stress unit back there that usually spell trouble, 
Um, and you can land a hit with this, get that debuff. Uh, any of the follow-ups you could choose with another character are pretty likely to hit at that point. The third combat skill is Wine Toss. Useful from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target rank 2, 3, or 4 enemies. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 80%, and a crit mod of plus 3%. This is going to inflict Blight on the target, starting with 2 points a round for 2 rounds with a 100% base. So this Blight is, uh... Not super powerful, not like Plague Doctor levels of powerful, but you're also going to do a little bit of damage in there too. Um, this is good if you just want to set a Blight on a guy, um, or if you don't quite have enough to take him out with an attack, this could do it within a turn or two. Um, it's very good for coverage in Blight groups, but uh, overall, I don't choose this as a ton, but it is a pretty potent move. The fourth combat skill is Wine Share, usable from rank 3 or 4. This is going to heal a target, one of your allies, for 2 HP, and it's going to heal yourself 2 HP. Um, as this grows, I haven't got a, a full level one to look at here, but it seems to be growing uh, in such a way that it's not going to give you a random distributed number to heal an ally, so it's pretty reliable. Um, it's never going to give you a zero like an occultist, but it's also never going to give you like a two or a one if you've already surpassed that potency in leveling up. So um, overall, it's not a bad way to get a, get a friend off death's door or heal somebody get yourself off of death's door. Um, it's pretty versatile in that way. It's a good backup heal. I would not count on it by itself in a dungeon, but it is very good for giving most of your party members a heal maneuver. A momentary abatement. The fifth combat skill is Bottle Bash. It is usable from rank 1 or 2 and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 enemies. This is a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 5. This is going to have a chance to set Blight and Bleed at 100% base each. They will both inflict one point a round for three rounds if they are inflicted. Um, this is a pretty interesting attack, actually. It's the only melee she's got. It's also the only front rank attack she's got. Uh, so if, she, if you're worried about her being shuffled, or if you want to sometimes use her in like rank 2, um, this is not a bad thing to equip. This is actually pretty useful in that kind of scenario. Um, it does a lot more damage than the uh, the Wine Toss does, comparatively. Um, and it could set Blight or Bleed. But overall, um, the potency, unless you land both, um, is a little bit lacking. But this could be a very versatile and uh, potent move if you luck into both Blight and the Bleed dropping. The sixth combat skill is Research. It's useful from rank 3 or 4 and can target any enemy rank. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 120, a damage mod of negative 100%, and no crit mod. This bypasses stealth and will de-stealth targets. This is also going to mark the target. This will also inflict a debuff at 100% base of minus 3 to that target's crit. So, this isn't going to miss often, this is very good for wiping out stealth guys um, and showing them to your party, but it's also just a good and reliable mark, because it's very unlikely to miss. So this is not a bad setup, if you're going in a mark comp, this is pretty much, uh, you, you can't replace this at all, uh, but we still haven't got to what makes the Eris great, and that is the next skill. The final combat skill for the Eris is Promotion. This is usable once per battle, and usable from rank 2, 3, or 4. You are going to select an ally. You are going to stress heal that ally, starting with minus 6 to their stress. 
and you're going to buff that target plus 10% to their resolve XP. As you level up, the stress heal goes up, and you add a buff to yourself to 10 accuracy. I don't know what the final level of this looks like. Uh, my apologies. I have not uh, used her as much as I intended. Um, however, you, you notice just the stress heal is going to be comparable to almost Jester by itself. And you're also getting that resolve XP bonus and a self buff. So you find that this is going to keep getting better and better returns. It's going to snowball into a stronger move as you level up. And it's very good for making sure you're leveling up a unit, an, an ally of hers, uh, more quickly than they should. I'm going to go out with a unit here in a second that's going to be level 3. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to be continually focusing on them while I'm going through the dungeon to level them up quicker. So let's go through our camping skills real quick. You got generic encourage, wound care, and pep talk as you'd expect. She also picks up supplies, which is, uh, I forget which actual units have this otherwise. Um, I think the antiquarian does as well. So you can actually use this similarly. Um, self only, time cost one, produces a random supply item, and you can use this twice per camp. So you could walk away with firewood, you could walk away with a shovel, uh, there's all kinds of items you can get with this. The second of her custom camping skills is motivational speech. This is time cost four. You are going to have a 75% chance of giving yourself 25 stress from giving this speech, but the rest of the party, the total of the party, is going to receive a 10% damage buff and have a 66% chance at each of these following effects. Plus 10 accuracy for four battles, plus 10 dodge for four battles, and minus 15 percent stress given in the next four battles. So this is very good um, at survivability in these dungeons. It's very good for reliably getting a hit or a dodge from things. Um, it's very it's a very versatile move. Uh, the only real downside is that 75% chance that she gets stressed out. But if you've got good camping units for removing stress, you can basically counteract that. You can start with this, end with that, and then look for a safe camping move. The third camping skill is Fine Wine. Time cost 4, the whole party is going to recover 15 stress and receive a buff minus 10% stress for the next 4 battles. So this is very good. Um, it's not often she likes to share her wine, but when she does, man, does she know how to party. Uh, the last camping skill is Night Watch. This is one of those aforementioned prevent nighttime ambush skills. It's time cost 3. The Aerith themselves is going to receive a debuff, minus 2 speed for the next 4 battles, but this is going to prevent nighttime ambush for your party. Um, so this is a very good one. I like the cost of it. I love prevent nighttime ambush at 3 cost. Uh, it feels more worthwhile, even if you're not getting as many cool buffs as some of the other skills might give you. It just feels worth it. Party composition is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, she's very good at support. She's got a lot of support tech going on. Um, so often you will probably have at least two of these three skills equipped because she is going to be ever, you know, very helpful in that regard. Uh, but I find a lot of times that I often choose between wine chair and research, remove one of those and to add more versatility to her secondary options. Um, sometimes I'll run with something like this or this. Uh, I can also see a uh, blight and bleed set being pretty good if that's the kind of party you're running with. Um, I think I'm going to run her with a um, mark party here in a little bit, so she's probably best with that. And I prefer damage, so I would run with something like that in this case. But she's very versatile as far as what she can supply and what kind of backup she can give the party. Uh, other things to think about here, uh, what quirks would I look out for? I would probably look out for anything that buffs her speed or her dodge or her crit. Now a couple of those were kind of patching up some below average stats uh, like dodge and crit. Because um, I find that if you can 
get her crit at get as much out of her crit as possible. Um, and if you have to specialize, uh, choose ranged, just because there's only the one melee. And even this can crit, technically, I believe. Um, so, if you have to specialize, go with the ranged, but if you can maximize her crit, then she will get the stress heal from that fairly often. And I find that's going to keep uh, your party afloat better, and especially when you factor in that she's going to be stress healing with this. And when we look at the trinkets, there's also some other options uh, to stress heal with wine chair as well. But overall, if you can patch up her dodge or her crit, potentially both, um, and add to her already above average speed, then you're probably not going to regret it. Some of the best quirks to find on her then are going to be things like Luminous or um, not Precise Striker, what's the other one? The ranged version of the crit, the crit quirk can't think about it right now. Um, otherwise, let's see. We should just dive straight into our trinkets. Alright, um, this mod comes with 12 trinkets. Uh, one Sunward trinket, a pet trinket, and two Crimson Court trinkets, and two Color of Madness trinkets. Uh, I have probably, uh, at an eyeball, looks like about two-thirds of them, but I do not have all of them. Uh, the first we're going to look at is Otherworldly Tincture. This is one of the crystalline trinkets. It's going to add 10% to her virtue chance. And now when she uses a friendly skill, it's going to stress heal that unit for 5 at the cost of stressing herself out for 4. So this is not bad if you want to uh, buff up promotion, get a little more stress heal out of it. But also, this is usable limited times. So she will then be able to use wine chair on an ally and stress heal them a smidge through that as well. Um, it's not bad if stress healing is your uh, focus in that in that way, then you can definitely get some work done with this. Uh, but I find that it's a little bit scary to be adding her stress once she's using this, so uh, I have yet to do it, but it looks like a fun and good way to play. The next one is Touch of the Cosmos. Now this is going to give you buffs in the condition that you have certain items in your inventory. Um, so it's going to, if you look at these buffs, just eyeballing it, it's going to give you uh, buffs for crest, deed, portrait, and bust in the inventory. And it's going to actually punish you for having gold in your inventory. Now we'll get to a weird combination with this trinket a little bit later when I go over that trinket that we're talking about. Um, because that minus 50 accuracy could be a good thing, uh, primarily. But overall, if you can if you can get all this stuff and not collect gold, and that's the only thing you're not collecting, then you can actually walk away with some good buffs from this. 10% to your damage, 8 to your dodge, and 6 to your accuracy, with another 5% on your crit. Now for a trinket that's including all those things, if you can find these uh, crests and deeds and whatnot, if you can find all these heirlooms, uh, this is really, really worth it. So on a longer quest, you're way more likely to find all of them. So I find this is a good way to outfit her in those long quests. The first of her rare trinkets is the Court Dress. It's going to add 15 dodge at the cost of 2 speed. And crits received are going to go up by 3%. Um, those negatives aren't all that bad. I'm glad to see not a stress negative on this trinket. Overall, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's very good for a dodgy heiress. The next rare trinket is Lipstick. This is going to add 20% to your debuff skill chance, 15% to your stress heals received, and 15% to your debuff resistance. So this is good, especially in combination with her barrage attack, where you're inflicting that dodge debuff on the enemies you hit. Um, so it's very good for buffing that up, and also the research debuff. The uncommon trinket they have here is Thick Bottles. Minus 60% to the Blight skill chance, but add 30% to your Bleed skill chance that you're inflicting. Minus 2 to your speed, and on your melee attack, which the only one you have is the Bottle Bash. On a melee attack's hit, you are going to stun that target with 120% base. So it's going to remove most of the blight skill chance because you're not fully breaking that bottle. You're still going to cause bleed, 
because you're getting hit by a thick-ass bottle, and it's going to cause a stun, most likely. Um, so I find this is a real fun way to be using Bottle Bash. Um, I don't like to use her in the front, and that's the only thing I'm coming up against with this. But if you can devise a party to do so on, like, say, round one, but be shifted around into the back ranks by round two, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, carrying this out. It's pretty fun. The next common trinket is Opera Glasses. It's going to add 3% to your crit at the cost of 6 to your dodge. It's going to add 10% to your scouting chance as well. Um, the dodge thing, that is just a, uh, a sight difference. You're, you're seeing things from farther, but you're also like avoiding anything that's right in your face. So it's actually well thought out. I love these buffs. And the questionable modification is the other common trinket. It's going to add 10% to your damage with ranged skills, 5% to crit with ranged skills, at the cost of 8 accuracy to your ranged skills. This is very similar to the one we're going to go over in a second, um, as far as combining with this Touch of the Cosmos in a weird and uh, actually worthwhile way. But overall, it's just kind of the, uh, the, the weaker version, so... It's good until you find the one we're going to go over in a second. And the ones we're going to have on her is the Experimental Pepper Box. This is the combo one I was referring to. It's going to add 20% of your damage. It's going to remove 15 from your accuracy. This is going to disable Wine Share, Have a Taste, and Bottle Bash. So you can't have any of those. This is for a damage set. Um, but on Attack Miss... The enemy party is going to suffer 5 HP all across the entire party. So you're probably doing, assuming there are 4 creatures, 20 damage across the entire party. I would argue, even though you're spreading that damage out, it is much more worthwhile for her to take a shot, miss, and then do 20 damage spread out. Because you just set probably at least half of those targets into a clear kill range for any of your other units to take out. So if you can set them up with this, get that miss, do 20 damage, spread out, yada yada, and then finish them off with the other three party members, this is a very good way to play. Um, minus 15 accuracy otherwise is kind of an issue, but as long as accuracy is the thing you're giving up, this trinket is a good equip. And the other one here is Sappho, which is the pet trinket. This is also going to add minus 10 from her accuracy. It's going to cost 100% more food to feed this now duo. And 20% chance the monsters, the monsters are surprised. And once she attacks, she is going to activate a uh, not very long-lasting repost. But as long as you keep attacking, it's not really going to be an issue. But she's now a repost unit. Which is going to increase her survivability a ton. So I find it's a lot of fun to just kind of like hit quick shot, try and take out a guy. If not, oh well, I guess I'm doing damage to everyone for missing, but also activating repost. So it's not a bad way to uh, start round one or two, depending on when I want to use promotion. I think that is enough. I think we're going to go straight into combat now. I guess we're going to go here. We have a couple of level threes. They should they should be able to handle this. The goal here is to show off her support tech and uh I don't have any one in his blood. We're gonna bring two just in case. These salt soaked caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares. They must be flushed out. Ooh. We got three battles all down this hall over here. That's not too bad. Um, we can go either way. We're going to go over here, though. All right, battle one. Now, the purpose of this party, I'm primarily focusing on marking with the hero, but my backup marker is the heiress herself. You went first. Of course you went first. All right, we're going to stun you, then, because you can be stunned. Oh well, kill the stunned guy, not a big deal. 
All right. Well, we're gonna use promotion to start out with, which is delightful. Uh, and it's gonna start adding to that resolve XP for when it's just battle as your buff duration. That means the entire quest. So for as long as you are battling. Let's see if I can mark everybody. Got one. I got one that was really unlucky. I think it's like a 70% mark. Something like that. So, yeah, that's pretty unlucky. Well, here. I can only reach him, though. Yikes. Annihilated. Let's just finish him. I'm going to... Since this is the marked unit... Oh, it's not going to be in rank 2 anymore. Damn. That sucks. I stalled to give her a shot at it. Well, we'll see if we can mark the other guy. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Quick shot. Let's see what this mark damage looks like. As the fiend falls, Not bad. I feel like that was a low roll. Blossoms. And that trinket is giving us the one round repost. Which is definitely uh, well worth it. Obliterated. These nightmarish okay. creatures can be failed, Not terrible. They can be beaten. You are the looter. Because you can pick up more... Um, stuff. Of which we did not look into. So she finds more heirlooms, and she finds them uh, at a higher rate, I believe, too. So she's very good for, for looting if gold is not your desire. Second, fight. All right, well, let's kind of soften you guys up. Use that on you. No pull. I'm fine with that. Well, well, well. I'm going to use promotion. Because it's always a good round one. Extra cheat for you if you don't all die. Oh, wow. That sounds fantastic. I only got one mark. Damn. I am not getting lucky with those boomerang throws. Well, we've got some other moves to show off, so I'm probably going to be using those. Let's try and kill you. Because you're in the front. Um, I can hit rank 3 with this. Let's do that. Destroyed. I'm trying to leave them for the heiress. Ooh, that's not going to do good. Um, shit. Well, we're going to do this then. Serious? Alright, let's just cleave through these guys with barrage real quick. Press this advantage. Them no quarter. That feels really potent because of the cleave, and the damage isn't that low, mount. so that's nice. So too will resistance. I'm gonna straight up get rid of these jade. I don't want them. Oh my god, they give me an end to the fucking battles. All right, looks like I'm gonna be walking for a little bit. You're the guy. Let's go. Third battle coming right up, guys. Gotta get to this next room. What other scout? I'm glad I put the treasure map on. The light, the promise of safety. Now, a couple things to also be considering uh, when you take her out and about is this white wine that she brings with her. Which I forgot about until now. But I will use on, let's say... I guess her actually makes the most sense. I'm gonna use it on her on her first round here. Yeah, as long as I don't forget. Hmm, I didn't switch you back. 
That's bad. Um. Yikes. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. That'll do for now. All right, girl. Give me your first turn. Hell yeah. All right, we're gonna use the white wine. It's gonna do both heals. Which is very nice, and I believe the stress heal is something like a 15 or even maybe more. So it's actually very helpful to pretty stressed out units. She's gonna come out with two of those white wines every time she goes on a quest, which is uh, a very good support. Haha! -ha! Good job, pet! I'm gonna stress heal you. Why not? I wish I had remembered to put on different moves for her. Uh, we're gonna use research, because we haven't yet. I throw the whole book at you! Oh. Oh, is that how you want to do this? Remind yourself that overconfidence is a right. and insidious killer. Well, that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the heiress. I don't think I forgot anything else I needed to talk about in the dungeon with her specifically. Uh, yes, she does when you loot with her. Give you more heirlooms and such. Uh, so that is nice. And uh, she comes with that wine. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we got another guide video coming up next Saturday. Uh, I think I know what class that's going to be. Um, and uh, let's see, we're going to have a couple other videos, Let's Plays, coming up this week. So watch those if you're interested. Uh, if you're still watching this, subscribe. It, it's big help to the channel. And uh, we could use all the subscribers we can get right now. And uh, your support is very, very appreciated. Um, let's see. I think that's it. So thanks for watching. Stay fresh. Yeah.